Today, I'm going to explain how to adjust the radius of your saddles so that they work with a compound radius fretboard, so stick around. <laughs> Hey everybody, it is Aaron at Warmoth, and today, as advertised, I'm going to explain how to adjust the radius of your saddles, or the height, the different heights of your saddles, so that they match a compound radius fretboard. And if you don't know what a compound radius fretboard is, I have already done a video on that where I used some big uh, circles and cones as kind of an object lesson to explain the philosophy behind it. But uh, in a nutshell, a traditional standard radius fretboard is a radius that has a slight curve to it that's the same all the way up the length of the fretboard. So if you say that your fretboard has a 10 inch radius, that means that if you took the curve of that fretboard and extended it into a big circle, the radius of that circle would be 10 inches. So a 10 inch radius would be the same all the way up the length of the fretboard. Now, if you have a compound radius fretboard, that means that you have a smaller radius down here. Generally, I know there are exceptions, but generally there's a smaller radius down here and a larger radius up here and a perfectly smooth transition between them along the length of the fretboard. So you can kind of visualize it by thinking that a traditional fretboard radius is the same all the way along it, it's, and it's like the slice out of a cylinder. It's like a slice off the edge of a cylinder, and the curve is the same all the way up. A compound radius fretboard is like a slice out of the side of a cone. So the cone would be very narrow down here and very large down here, and the fretboard is a slice out of that. So down here it has a very pronounced curve, up here, it has a much flatter curve. And so the question comes up quite often, actually, how do I set the radius of my saddles to match that fretboard? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. This is going to be a pretty short video. Uh, all you have to do is, in your mind, extend the length of that imaginary cone past the end of the fretboard and all the way to where the saddles are. So if it's 10 to 16, and, I'm, and by the way, Warmoth sells three different compound radius fretboards, um, but 10 inch to 16 inch is the one that we sell by far the most. We've been selling it for 40 years now. Um, so I'm gonna use that in my examples. So if it's 10 inches down here and 16 inches down here, just extend that cone out a little further and you can figure out about what that would be. Now, if you're an engineer or a mathematician and you like doing those kind of computations for fun, knock yourself out. Um, and I actually, I would love to know what you come up with once the math is actually done. For me, I just kind of ballpark it in my mind. I figure 10 to 16, that's gonna probably be about 20, maybe 18 or 19 or 20. It's gonna be in there somewhere. Um, and so I use that as a starting point. Um, and then once I've done that, then I'm going to adjust it to feel anyway, which is kind of the bottom line with, with guitars anyway. You just use measurements to get in the ballpark, and then you're going to adjust it by feel to what you like. That's why you can have a hundred different guitar players, and every one of them wants their guitar adjusted a little differently. Um, but anyway, to, to measure that, you need a set of radius gauges. And for that, I use these. These are radius gauges from Stumac. I keep them in the uh, handy Ziploc bag of Luthery. And uh, they come in a set. And you can get radius gauges from all kinds of different places, but I like these because they allow you to measure both uh, above and by slipping them under here like so from below. And when you are setting action, you really need to measure from below, from underneath, because it's the underside of the strings that you're trying to measure, not the top. So in this case, because it's a 10 to 16 inch radius, compound radius neck, they're labeled right here. Let me find the 20. There's the 20 right there. So that's what I use, and I just, slip them right under the strings like so. 
and then you know pull upwards lightly on it you don't want to pull very heavy and then you can get right down in there and and the the clearances we're talking about are very slight and I almost have to sometimes push on the string just a little bit to tell and uh, this one now this is a Floyd Rose so adjusting the individual height of the saddles is a little bit tricky but this was the first uh, guitar that I grabbed that had a compound radius fretboard on it so this these two strings in the middle could probably be a little lower but it's okay I've been playing this guitar for years and I like it the way it is just fine. If, if I had a guitar with more easily adjustable saddles, I would probably lower those two just a bit. And I don't know if you can see this. I mean, you really have to kind of kind of be here in person to see it. But the outer strings are touching. See, see when I, I press down lightly on the string, you can see the radius gauge move a little bit. But when you get it here, I can press down on the strings and the radius gauge isn't moving at all. That's because there's a, a tiny gap there. And that is how I like to set the radius of my saddles so that they work with a compound radius fretboard. If you have any more questions, make sure and check out the Warmoth website because we have more information there. Or you can always call our customer service reps. They're happy to help. And if you're one of those engineers or mathematicians or otherwise a brainiac inclined people, post your calculations in the uh, comments below because I would like to see them. Uh, and that is it. Until next time, keep on picking.